My name is Joy. I'm an international student at Wellesley. I come from St. Kitts and Nevis, which is a twin island state in the Caribbean. But I'm from Nevis, which is a smaller island, and we're probably the smallest country in the Western Hemisphere. I live in Gingerland, which is in the countryside of Nevis, right at the bottom of Mount Nevis, which is our one and only mountain. Um, and I'm going to tell you about my childhood growing up in Nevis. The first two years of my life I spent in a sugar mill where my dad was living. Um, it was an old sugar mill left over from the days of plantation. Um, and then the second year of my life there was a huge hurricane uh, on the island and everything blew down basically. And then my dad decided that it was time for us to move to a normal proper house. It had a solid roof, so he began building a house right next to the sugar mill on some land that he had there. So basically that's how we moved into the house that we're in today. My dad built it along with the help of some of his friends from the neighborhood. And the house has never really been finished actually, so it's still kind of a work in progress 20 years later. So there's so many stories I can tell from my childhood. I mean, I can talk about hurricanes, but I can talk about donkeys. I can talk about going fishing or drag racing. So I don't know what I'm supposed to talk about. I don't know. My house is really big. It's really spacious. It's full of car parts because my dad is a mechanic. Nothing's finished. The walls aren't painted. The tiles aren't done. Everything's sort of in a state of being done, but it's not done. Um, I didn't grow up with electricity because we have solar power, which means that we use the energy from the sun to power all our lights in the house. And that actually wasn't even a decision. It was basically because after the hurricane, there wasn't electricity on our island for about five months. So everybody in the island kind of had to adapt. And then we just never got electricity. Um, so that basically means I didn't grow up having a TV or having videos or having a microwave or even being able to plug anything into the wall. Yeah, it was very different from how all my friends grew up. All my friends had TVs, even though their house was a lot smaller than mine, they still had a TV or they had, I don't know, lots of other things that you can <laughs> use with electricity. They had irons, they had big stereo systems, but I liked how I grew up um, when the electricity cut on the island. We're the only people who had lights, so I could look and if I was in my neighborhood I could always look and see my house because it was the only one that had lights. My friends used to come over and study when I got older because when electricity cut we couldn't study if we had a big exam the next day. So it was more like a party. So I really liked it. And then when there were hurricanes, of course, we were also the only ones who had electricity and then it was a really big party. That was probably one of my funnest experiences growing up, hurricanes. I think I've lived through about 10 or 11 hurricanes. They happen all the time because we're in the Caribbean, so we're right in the path of hurricanes. Um, but her we're a really community-based society, so when hurricanes happen, it's basically a very good excuse to get together as a community and sort of party and wait out the hurricanes. So you always know when hurricanes are about to happen. You listen to your radio and then every morning when you wake up in the morning when I was little I knew there was going to be a hurricane because all you would hear is bang, bang, bang. Because everybody in the whole neighborhood was putting up boards to cover their windows and boards to cover their doors. Um, banging in nails, cutting down trees and there was always a big frenzy and then we would go to the supermarket and buy lots of canned stuff, lots of water, lots of other things. And then when the actual hurricane come, we would all be sitting, usually we would be sitting with about 10, sometimes 15 neighbors and family and friends who would come because we had a downstairs part of our house that was safe in the event that the roof blew off of our house. And then we would just sit, the adults would get drunk, <laughs> they would drink alcohol, the kids would drink Kool-Aid. The best part was probably the af aftermath of the hurricane because we all went out. First of all, we couldn't even get out of our door because the tree had, bl had blown down right in front of our door. So it took a good while to chop up the tree, which was fun. And then, of course, after a hurricane, everybody goes outside to see what damage has happened, to see whose house is blown off, to see what they can collect, if there's anything interesting that's landed on the beach, because everything lands on the beach. You see dead fish, sometimes there's a dead shark, there are lots of shells, that's where you find the best shells, and there are boats and pieces and bits and things that have washed up. So a huge boat washed up, and we all went down. We played on the boat. <laughs> Okay, you only know the story because I've told you this story. Yeah, basically the first time, I grew up like outside, as I said before, so I never wore shoes. I mean, I didn't even used to wear clothes when I was really little until my mom forced me to. So basically when I had to go to primary school, it was the first time they actually had to force me to wear, you know, shoes all day long, um, every day. And it was a war, basically. 
I mean, they bought these little black leather shoes that I still remember today because I hated them. I wanted to throw them out so much. I had fantasies of just throwing them in the garbage. But they made me wear them with white socks every day. And that's probably my worst, most traumatic experience of going to school. It wasn't leaving my mom. I wasn't doing anything like that or being with all these children. It was just wearing those horrible shoes. So even in high school, I had a reputation for as soon as I got to school, taking my shoes off and walking around in my socks all day long. <laughs> cut, 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 cut! Can you stop saying cut? Because I cut whenever I feel like cutting, <sighs> not when you tell me to cut joy. <laughs> What else do you want me to say? Anissa? You usually, when you start talking about Nevis Joy, you talk for hours and <laughs> hours and no one can stop you. I know, but it's different when you have a camera in your face. You don't know what to say.